Okay, so welcome, Brett Ratner, to my little series called uh, In Conversation With. Thanks so much for joining us today. Of course, you're so good at this. I'm so excited to oh, be here with you, know, you. I just figured during this time, you know, everyone's sort of on their social medias and, and on different, you know, devices. And I think mm -hmm. people want to hear from people instead of seeing a photo that doesn't necessarily tell you too much. Whereas Absolutely. hearing someone speak, you get that human connection, which we're all missing, I think. Yeah. At the moment. No, it's an amazing time uh, in the world right now. And I mean, you know, I'm friends with, you know, as, uh, with, as you know, with a lot of older people, people that are 80, 90 years old, and they haven't experienced this. So uh, the whole world, I mean, especially with my world is entertainment is changing. Yeah. And it just, imagine if we, imagine if we didn't have this, this capability and we were stuck in our homes, like in eight, 19, 18, 19, 19, and you're waiting yeah. for the newspaper to come to tell you what's happening. So the, 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 the globalization um, of, of media and film is just phenomenal. And, you know, even though, yes, movie theaters are, are unfortunately are, are getting hurt because, you know, they can't, you can't, you know, congregate in movie theaters, but, but, um, content around the world. I mean, I'm watching shows from Israel. I'm watching shows from from Spain, from every part of the world. So now you could be a, a filmmaker, a child, a young boy or girl from Dubai, and and make yeah. a film and put it on YouTube, and people can see it around the world. And that's what's there's so much I think inspiration and artistic, as much as there is, you know, unfortunately death and and disease and and um and sadness and pain for families but there's also a lot of hope and technology is just it's it's a fascinating time to be alive you know it's, it's truly unfortunately is. it's not good for for intimacy or relationships but otherwise yeah. it's <laughs> it's good for creativity creativity i've never been so creative i feel That's in good. years i guess that was one of one of my questions for you at uh, well Perhaps I should properly introduce you to who, who's watching. Oh, okay. Brett, you are probably one of the most prolific directors slash producers in the US up to date. And stemming from the time that you were eight years old when you got your first camera. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, your, your grades were so-so at school. So you asked your teacher if you could present video as a means of yeah. him critiquing you or, or grading you. And then yeah. I know when you were a young teenager, you uh, you talked your way onto the set of Scarface. Yeah. Wag school. I don't know if wagging is like a an Australian term, but you did. Mm -hmm. And then you were the youngest um, member to to enter into New York Film School and did uh, New York University. New York, New York University, University is Film School. Yeah. And uh, your first, what was it? Um, Something about uh, your first film. What was it called? The one that you sent? It's called what, Whatever Happened to Mason Reese. To Mason Reese. I did a short film who was a child star. And I met him on the street and I asked him to star in my student film. And it's that film that I sent to 40 of the biggest people in the industry. Because film school teaches you how to make films. They don't really teach you how to get a job. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know anybody in the business. My grandparents were doctors. I didn't have any. No, I, I might as well have been from the end of the world, you know, I didn't, I didn't know anybody. And uh, I sent it and I got 39 rejection letters. And finally I got a call from Steven Spielberg's company. And the rest and, is and history, Amber. so they say. Yeah. You since went well, on saw, to direct film, uh, sorry, music videos for the likes of Madonna, Jessica Simpson, a lot of hip hop and, and uh, R&B culture as well. And then yeah. obviously huge studio films in, yeah. Rush Hour, your franchise, X Men, you know, and then, and then Rat Pack, of course, had such success with The Revenant and so many films thereafter. Yeah, well, I my the film I'm the most proud of that I directed is a film called The Family Man. I don't it know if you ever saw that, Elizabeth. Taylor, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I did a, another. I've done films in like multiple genres. I did uh, Red Dragon, which is the prequel to Silence of the Lambs. You were 31 so years very, old very when young. you directed Red Dragon. 31. I, I was, but I was 26 when I did my first movie, Money Talks, and then 27 turning 28 when I did Rush Hour. So 
I was kind of a child protege, even though at 26, I thought I was too old. I thought I was old because I'd started when I was eight years old and I had two friends who directed their first movie at 19. And I thought, wow, I'm an old man. I'm 26. <laughs> so it's, it's all relative. It's all relative because it is. You know, it's a valuable lesson because I learned never to compare myself. If I compare myself, you won't be happy. You know, you have to set goals for everyone's on their own path. Yeah. Everyone's on their own journey. Everyone has their own, you know, um, career path. And for me, uh, you know, I was just on the path I was on, but I started when I was very young. I was very blessed because I knew what I wanted to do from a very young age. Yeah, and I think when you know, and I had a, and I had a lot of love and encouragement. You know, I have a great family and they were totally supportive. And I always, I was fearless going into this stuff because I felt like, you know, no matter what, my grandma was still going to love me. My grandpa was still going to love me. Even if oh, I didn't they become, love you. They love you. <laughs> and oh, even if I didn't. Later. Thank you. And even if I didn't become a, a, a movie, the movie director I, I dreamed of becoming, they were still going to love me no matter what. So for me, it was, um, you know, it was definitely a dream come true, but it was a long journey. People are always in a rush to, for it to happen. And I said, you know, the thing that people will have to realize is that hard work is the key ingredient. Being fearless is important, but hard work, because I believe somebody that works, you know, harder Somebody with 90% effort and 10% talent will probably be more successful than somebody with 90% talent and 10% effort. And it's oh, usually absolutely. the people that are really, really, really successful mm -hmm. who, who are sometimes complacent because I'm sorry, yeah. people are really, really talented that are complacent mm -hmm. because they, they have this natural ability and they don't feel that they have to work hard because they also feel and have a sense that they're better than everybody else you know, in the class or in their, in their work environment, they always the think that they're, so it's, so it's important to, you know, be self-aware, know, you, know where you stand, you know, uh, study the greats and become greater, but don't let it get in the way. Don't realize, Oh, I'm not as successful as him. I know if I compare myself to Steven Spielberg, for instance, I'll never be happy. Right. Yes. He's much older than me. He's much, much, much more. Yeah, successful plenty of than time. Me. Yeah. But I have to set, you have to set goals for yourself reach those goals, not ever think about what anybody else is doing and never quit. If you quit, you'll never know if you would have done it. So that's the other thing I tell people is never quit. If yeah. you love something, if you love what you're doing, if you're passionate about it, it never felt like a job. Uh, it never felt like a job for me. Yeah. It always felt like something I just couldn't wake up, couldn't wait to wake up and get on with what I was doing. Go to the movie set, direct Jackie Chan, direct Chris Tucker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. You know, sometimes people are 30, 40 years old. They don't know what they want to do, which is fine. Right? Yeah. That they were on a different journey. And then sometimes some of the most successful people that I've ever met in my life became successful at 50 or 60 years old. Yeah. Um, because they just had that whole life experience. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I regret not doing was studying economics, studying philosophy, studying sociology. But you studying went back to Harvard recently. Well, now I went back to school, but I'm talking about when I start, when I was doing it, I was yeah. just focused. I was micro focused and I'm going to be a director, but yeah. being a director is being a storyteller and having, yes, the life experience is very useful yes. in, 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 in being a storyteller. But the other thing that is useful and, and is having, you know, learning, learning about culture, learning about history sorry mm -hmm. learning about um sorry learning about um learning about uh people ways know. of life different perspectives yeah. yeah so so for me um you know it was never going i lost you for a second uh, you're for back. me um i was i was always micro focused which is good because I became successful very young. Mm -hmm. But as I got older, I realized, wow, there's stuff I don't understand. I don't learn. And I, I'm, I'm always interested. I'm curious. I'm a curious person. I'm always interested in learning things. I'm always surrounding myself with people more successful than me, mm -hmm. more, you know, uh, 10 That's times more successful than me. Not to I be the smartest from, person in the room. Yeah. I want to learn from them. I want to, mm -hmm. I want to, I want to pick their brain. I want to eat their brain. I want to, <laughs> all my friends are, are, you know, 10, 20, 
30 years older than me. Yeah. And it's not that I don't like people my age or, or younger people. It's just that I've always been the youngest kid in the room. I've always wanted to learn um, from the people I surround myself, people that pull me up. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, and I think you're the same. You're, you're in a different, Very you much. went from Australia. You went from Australia to Dubai. I mean, that's an incredible uh, yeah. uh, cultural cultural difference. Absolutely, you know, but you know, it, it brings so much uh, richness to one's life to to understand the world as as a global perspective, as opposed to yeah. you know an Australian perspective or, or living in the US like I did or or here. Yeah. In particular, the the Middle East because you know the Middle East was like the cradle of civilization, right back in yes. the time, yeah. or, you know. Babylonian times and and you've got just so much rich history the very first university was in Iraq in the world so I think coming here just taught me a lot about um about life really mm. but yeah, it's, it's interesting I, lo I love learning about different cultures yeah and different types of people every time I go to a foreign country I make friends with like the cab driver. I want to go to his house. That's, that's and see what it's like. Yeah. Yeah. I want, I want to go to his house and see how they eat and how they live and how they, yeah. how they, how, the, how, how, you know, culturally, I just, I love different cultures, different civilizations. And yeah. hopefully when this, that's what I'm going to do when the coronavirus clears up, I'm going to go places that I've never been. I've never been to the Middle East except for Israel. I've never been, I'm interested in going to Saudi Arabia. I want to go to Dubai. And, oh, you have to you know, go to Saudi um, and you have to come to the UAE. Saudi yeah. and the UAE and, and Jordan. I mean, Petra in Jordan is probably one of yeah. the most incredible places I've been. Having traveled so much, but Petra, I mean, you would know it from when they did the uh, Indiana Jones yeah. franchise. They filmed in Petra and it's yeah. just extraordinary. And of course, you've got... Uh, where Jesus was baptized, which is between you can be at the river and you can see Israel and you can be in Jordan. And it's the same wow. point, meeting point. So oh. you can get baptized wow. from the Jordanian side or you can get baptized from the Israeli side. But they're both like, you can see it. It's incredible. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'm, 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 I'm very um, interested in, tra I mean, I love Asian culture. I, that's why Rush Hour Mm -hmm. I think I, I created and I, and I've been, I've been fascinated by, you know, I haven't been to Southeast Asia really, but I've been to, you know, Hong Kong and China and Russia. I love, I love Russia. I haven't been to South America. So my two places are South America. How have you South of all people not been to South America? You have well, I, cause I've been, I've been to Cuba. I've been to Mexico, Central America, Panama. I've been to the Caribbean, all over the Caribbean, all the Latin countries. How do I not know you've not been to South America? Argentina, Brazil, you know. I know, it's amazing. Hello. So, I, yeah, I, I need to, I need to, uh, to go ex explore, Will you explore those post, countries. Post-COVID and post-quarantine days, you know, are you looking at doing any new film projects? Is there anything on the horizon? Or yeah, of course. I'm, I'm, always, I'm, always, I'm always developing uh, films, and it's just a, it's a very long process. What, I'm, I'm a storyteller. I'm, I've always, yeah. even when I'm not shooting a film, I'm doing a music video or I'm taking a photograph that's telling a story or, you know, You're video a working on a photographer, I must say. Thank beautiful you. photographer. W working on a video game uh, project or now I'm, I'm exploring podcasts and I'm just, I'm, anything that is, is storytelling, all, yeah. all forms of storytelling. I'm not a snob. Even I do big movies, everyone is like, why would you take photographs if you're a movie director? Because you get to make moving pictures. No, I go, yeah, but there's some. It's 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 uh, there's something beautiful about telling a story with one image, with one photograph. It's a challenge. So I'm always trying to challenge myself, and I'm always trying to perfect my my sensibilities. Documentaries. I've done maybe 20 documentaries. Mm -hmm. Everyone thinks of me as this big Hollywood guy, and I do these big movies, but documentaries are just, you know, fascinating. I'm a doco uh, buff. I'm a yeah. doco buff. I love yeah. documentaries. And have you seen, what have you seen lately? Like, obviously, you well, saw I mean, the everyone's King. seen The Last Dance, of course, which I'm oh, a huge that's amazing. fan. Yeah, which I'm a massive fan of, of sport in particular. You know, I'm from Melbourne. It's like the sporting capital yeah. of the world. So, I mean, that was, 
one of them. I, I've watched a lot of Ted Bundy <laughs> documentaries. I like the crime documentaries. And you're looking at him going, he's so handsome. I could see myself getting with this serial killer. I could see myself. <laughs> He was I very good looking. Why it happened? He he certainly had a lot of uh, charm. charm. Yeah. But, you know, he was a mass murderer at the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> how, how much kudos can we give him, really? But it's an interesting exactly. story. I, I like I like the psychology behind why people do things that they do, why they make the decisions that they do, and yeah. where it stemmed from, perhaps from childhood issues in childhood and so forth. So. I find that fascinating. Maybe, maybe you should be like a forensic psychiatrist. That's where you, you, you oh. study serial killers. Like Hannibal Lecter, you know, I directed Red Dragon, which is the prequel to Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. So Hannibal Lecter, so Edward Norton was kind of a, a uh, well, actually Hannibal was a, a psychiatrist who, who helped them catch yeah. serial killers, you know? Well, so you I never know. Be, I, I, it might be like a criminal profiler one day. Yeah. I'll take great pride I, in that. I, <laughs> when I did that movie, I went to the FBI headquarters and I spent time with the, with the uh, FBI division that focused on serial killers. And insane. it was fascinating. Insane. It was really fascinating, fascinating stuff. So um, insane. Anyway, this is my favorite brand, by the way, Fila. I don't know if Fila. you know this brand. I love Fila. When I was a kid, I wore this every day. I haven't worn it in years. So I, I remember I'd the put story it on. that you told me, like when you had yeah. your bar mitzvah, you took like yeah, all exactly. the money and went to Fila and like decked yourself exactly. out. Exactly. You know all my stories. It's amazing. But you know what? I see you. I've known you for future. 10 years. <laughs> I see you in Australian politics. That's where I see you. I think you're going to be like Julie Bishop, like the future Julie Bishop. You're going to be like <laughs> the vice. I'm uh, really happy to hear that, you know. We, we have that commonality in a friendship, you and I and, and Julie, and yeah. she's an extraordinary woman in, in her own right, most she's certainly. Amazing. I think politics yeah. is such a different game to get into and you really have to have that, that thick skin and that takes a little while to cultivate. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm 35 well, Australian, poli- Australian, 35, you look 25. Well, That's Australian nice. politics is very, is very shrewd yeah. and tough. I met I you when I was 25. Way. But yeah, Australian okay. politics is vicious, vicious. Yeah, yeah. And 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 uh, yeah, it's it's um, it's uh, it's fascinating. Fanita, your grandmother was quite involved in politics in Cuba, was she not? Yeah, and well, mostly in Florida. Even she was very influential with the Latin vote, and she helped get almost every governor mm-hmm. uh, through the seventies, eighties, and nineties elected, and every judge every federal judge, every circuit court judge. I mean, she was, she was very, very influential with the, with, and also presidential. She was working on the Clinton campaign and, and, and yeah. the, she's a real Democrat. Mario, my grandfather, rest in peace. He's so Republican. A, he was a Republican, so they were very yeah. different. I was gonna and say that so, because, you know, when I was living at your place, I, when I used to have dinner with Pippa and Fanita, the political conversations that we would have <laughs> was so great because, Pippa was so Republican and, of course, Fanny was a Democrat. <laughs> yeah. And I would kind of sit in the middle and just be the sponge that would just yeah. listen to the banter. I loved it. They're amazing. Yeah, it was like a great I, wealth of, of knowledge. I mean, you have so many stories to tell. It's a, Maybe someone should do a, a doco on you, on your life. I don't know. I think I'm going to write a book first because the stories will yeah. be misconstrued. They'll be, yeah. uh, they'll be very, they'll be, you know, when, when, it has to be kind of, they have to be written and then they could. Autobiography their, breathe their, first. Breathe, breathe their own life. Yes, I'm thinking about when I would start that or when I would do that. And, Why aren't you uh, starting it now? I mean, there's time, right? While you're in isolation. I know. Yeah, but I, I, I have a, such a bad memory. So I don't know really. I mean, I could leave it blank and have a researcher come in and do the, 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 the chart of the years and every yeah. like I don't remember the years that I did certain things I know I went to college from 86 to 90 I know and I went to high school but when certain <laughs> things happened I don't know and it's important to have all the details but I'll, it, I'll do it it would I, trigger though you would memories would come flooding back I feel yeah. it would be like a cathartic process to to remember everything know, my, my book my book is going to be just fascinating because Oh, I have so many. I I met some of the most. I mean, the the most, the greatest thing about being really successful in the film business and being, you know, whatever, famous somewhat 
is yeah. that I got to meet some of the most interesting people. Who would be on your, like on your list of like five that you'd have, say, for, you know, the dinner party? Who would be the five? <clears throat> God, it's hard. I mean, I've met so, so many, but I would say um, uh, mostly from all, all walks of life, from Michael Jackson, who became a very close friend of mine, yeah. uh, who was one of the most inspiring people I ever met, to, um, you know, some of the greatest people in finance, in, in, in politics, you know, in... in um, in all industries, not just film. I mean, obviously film, I've met all my heroes, right? Or a lot of them. But, but in other, other walks of life, in other, um, you know, industries that I never thought I would, would, you know, interact with people, whether it's, you know, I had Ban Ki-moon at my house, the Secretary General of the United Nations, you know, for dinner. But I just, it's just, the list is, goes on and, on yeah. and on and it's just um lost it's your um, screen, doll. lost your screen uh oh am i there can you hear me no i can hear you but i can't see you okay there, there you sorry go. um sorry so so yeah i mean uh is there endless. anyone just, that you are yet to meet that you are dying to meet spend time with hear this um you know, I have people that I regret I didn't meet and I was literally going to meet them and then something happened. Mm-hmm. I didn't meet Fidel Castro. I was always wanting to meet Fidel Castro. Yeah. Even though he's a dictator and a communist, I guess, but he's, he was just a brilliant man. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to meet, um, I wanted to meet, um, um, uh, I wanted to meet and I didn't get to meet, um, Who's the, who's the, who's the, uh, um, they did a movie about him. I'm sorry. Uh, you did a the, movie the with him? No, no. They did a movie about him. The, the, he was crippled. Uh, and he wrote the book. Um, oh my God. I'm so, I must not have gotten a lot of sleep last night. Um, <laughs> oh, 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 Stephen Hawking. Sorry. Stephen Hawking. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Incredible. I've always wanted to meet him. Yeah. I've I mean, always wanted that to meet mind, Stan, that mind. Stan, Stanley Kubrick, but I didn't get to meet him. Okay. There's so many um, uh, people that I've wanted to meet and I didn't get to, and I, I'm not gonna, you know, life, life is long, but it's also short and you know, you never know. But, I, yeah. but I've come, not, not just famous people, I've come across, I did a short film about a, a woman, a Cuban woman who's just, is May 30th will be her 105th birthday. She drinks my whiskey every day. Every day she drinks my whiskey. She became a famous painter at a hundred. Wow. And and uh, and uh, you can Google it. It's Carmen Herrera. No, I, I know it. I know it. I... It's called the Hundred Year Show. Uh-huh. Is the film? But she's she's fascinating. I met some just the most fascinating, interesting, you know, dynamic people. Me I mean, I mean, she drinks your whiskey. Yes. But you don't. No, I don't. I don't. How does, I just don't how drink does that come about that someone that doesn't drink, smoke, or allow shoes in their house come up with a mm-hmm. whiskey brand that's to your iconic well, home, your Hollywood home, Hillhaven? Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a capitalist. I, wanna, you know, I, I bought this beautiful home and I want to, you know, monet- I, I, I saw a way to monetize it because it was a, a famous <laughs> house that, that had bars everywhere and entertained it was for entertainment it was a house built just for entertaining and i thought it should have its own whiskey it should have its own brand it should be its own brand it was named it was yeah. a named house i didn't i didn't name it it was built in 1927 mm-hmm. um i'm looking to expand it globally right now it's just in a few states in the united my, states my very first visit to that iconic home of yours was like a baptism of fire welcomed to la i'd only been in la for five days and then it was your birthday and you you'd had a dinner right. party and i walked in and it was your friends it was mick jagger eddie murphy warren Beatty. it was just this bunch of people at hillhaven lodge and that was my introduction right. to 
like oh wow <laughs> really well, I, I like i like i like old school guys i like guys who have you know had a tremendous amount of success but really enjoyed themselves while they were here you know oh, um yeah, was a fun night yeah but i think i but didn't anyway, realize that that's not the norm in hollywood I, I was like oh okay so this is la Whereas I don't yeah. think that, that is necessarily a, a representation. No, I, I collect older guys, older men per se. I, I collected them. I always, like I said, I always wanted to learn from them and listen to their stories, their experiences, their highs and lows, their own, you know, it was just, it was, it was educational for me to, to yeah. I didn't waste a minute. You know, Bob Evans, Robert Evans, the producer was my mentor mm -hmm. and, and he was, um, my battery's not charging. It's weird. It's okay. Well, I might lose you in five minutes. But anyway, the, um, you know, so I had this guy who was, I met him, I think he was in his late 70s, early 80s. He recently died. And he, for, you know, more than 10 years, I lived with him for two years. Mm -hmm. He was just a, uh, an incredible mentor for me. And he had the, one of the most tumultuous lives in Hollywood, every, where he started as an actor, became the head of a movie studio, became one of the most prolific producers in Hollywood, then was uh, uh, almost indicted for murder, even though he wasn't involved in the murder. You know, all these crazy things happened to That's him. That's a, a lot lived, right? Yeah, I mean, he, he just, you know, he was behind The Godfather and Chinatown and some of the greatest movies ever. Mm. And he, he, um, he was just an amazing guy to, you know, to, to be around. So I lived in his house because I wanted to speak to, I wanted to hear his stories every day of my life. It was like one of the great, and they made a film about his life called the kid stays in the picture. You should see okay. it. Yeah. It's amazing. It's really inspiring. Um, is, there, is there someone's life that you would like to turn into a, a part, aside from your own, but if you had to pick yeah. someone to, to document to either in a documentary sense or photography sense, who would it be? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm interested in, I mean, maybe in Hollywood, I guess Warren Beatty, there's never been a documentary made about Warren Beatty and he was, you know, he was just a, was nominated for more, more, more Oscars than anybody, but also was a director, a writer. He was the only, he was the only person that was nominated in four categories, only actor that was nominated in four categories, which is directing, writing, producing, and acting mm -hmm. ever. And he's done it twice. That's insane. So, yeah. So he's, he's, he's an amazing guy. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm obsessed with, with, dictators i want to get into the mind of the megalom i saw a, di a documentary okay. years ago on on Idi Amin, on Idi Amin, and okay. it was a fascinating documentary um i would love to do a documentary about dictators and you know kim jong-un and you know uh yeah, where is he <laughs> <laughs> all these amazing uh fascinating men who kind of yeah you know and going forward our, our, into like the next, say, five years, what's something that mm. you would like to achieve that you perhaps feel that you're yet to achieve that's on the to-do list of Brett Ratner? Well, I've always, I always want to continue to make great films. That's, I think I'm really good at that, and that's where my focus is. But again, I get as much joy out of producing a film because it's, even though it's not as... Um, does work. part of you just itch to direct it though? Like, isn't it incredibly difficult from a director's, you know, you have that in your, you know, your soul. So to sit no, back. No, but I still, I get a little bit, I get a little bit of, of um, satisfaction in producing. It's not the same because directing, you're making every single decision. Producing, yeah. you're really kind of behind, not behind the scenes, but you're kind of, you know, the, the director, as you know, is the storyteller. He's yeah. working with the actors. He's telling, putting where the camera where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. As a producer, I don't want to be on set, but as a director, I want my producer standing right next to me because I want to be able to bounce my ideas off of. Mm -hmm. But no, I'll continue making films. But again, I'm exploring other, other um, 
I would say, avenues of storytelling, which, like I said, is video games, uh, podcasts, you know, short <laughs> stories, short, short films, short films. Mm -hmm. I, I was thinking, I found a short, a, a magazine article that I was, that actually, uh, it's a brilliant article about a, about a Palestinian, no, an Israeli, wait, no, a Palestinian doctor mm -hmm. who saved a Jew's life using a, a, a technology that was created by the Nazis. Whoa. It's an amazing uh, uh, short story that I read in, in a, in a That's newspaper. Incredible. I mean, I, I'm taking so, it, was it fictional or it was? True like, story, true story, true story. That's incredible. So I, but I'm thinking, I don't think it's enough to make a movie movie out of it. So I'm thinking of directing it as a short film. Okay. Well, then so, you'll have to come a, over to the Middle East. Yes, yes, of course. And, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm, I have a, a business, you know, I have, I'm a businessman also because I have my liquor business and of course I, yeah. you know, so I think, uh, I think you have to, being a filmmaker, director, you have to have some business sense because you have to be responsible for a budget, you know, it's like running oh, a, a company. Yeah. It's running a corporation. So there's a lot of those skills that need to be applied. You feel uh, like to that, the, but I, the studios are now leaning towards, you know, your Netflix and your, you know, your streaming services as opposed to your blog. Well, no, the whole business is changing. Like I said, the globalization of film is, yeah. has, you know, has opened up the doors for content. And I think the, because of the streaming services that are kind of taking over, the power is shifting more to the producers, mm -hmm. which is great, which is they're creating their own intellectual properties, their own. It's not driven by the studios. It's driven by people like me who have an idea yeah. and go and generate the idea, cast it, mm -hmm. create the material, you know, make it and then go and use, use the streamers as kind of banks and distribution yeah. you know uh uh vehicles and not necessarily to create do you, feel, do you feel like creatively some films are quite not watered down i don't want to say that but there's such an emphasis on you know the marvel franchise and i feel like films like dances with wolves and like a river runs through it or legends of the fall and those the, the epic you know kind of beautifully yeah i mean i think i think uh, films. those films those films have kind of fallen by the wayside yeah. And I think, I think they'll come back with streaming, but I think that, that, uh, you know, yes, there's, there's a, an emphasis on visual effects on, on yeah. comic book characters and good old fashioned kind of storytelling is kind of, but I think it's going to come back because of the amount of content that's going to yeah. be made in these streaming services, there's going to be a need for these stories again, because great oh, stories, is, a great, a great story is a great story, but all the gimmicks and, and effects and all that stuff is is kind of gonna it's gonna it's gonna get thin you know it's yeah. gonna i just miss like I think the, I, you know the epic scores of those films and, yeah. and the music that was in those films were just so incredible so I, yeah for me that's what i crave most why i put on those type of films like dances with wolves no just great great stories great stories that you know yeah. um last of the mohicans there's so many great yeah. stories yeah. Um, and, and, and there's so many great, um, you know, in every culture, there's so much history, for instance, there should be more films out of the Middle East. Mm -hmm. You know, there's such great history there and, and, and they, it's just the education system has to catch up to Hollywood has such a great, you know, with American film schools teaching, you know, all the skills and, 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 and students using their craft. Yeah. to tell stories um is la that's what's lacking in countries like china or the middle east or so i think there's an opportunity for for an education system to be implemented um where people can really learn because there's so many great artists out there that they don't even but they just don't have the technical because the technical you can look at learn everything about the technical side of filmmaking for instance in a book yeah. but the storytelling has to be taught by someone who's actually uh, been a storyteller and had the life experience yeah. and taught you from there and, and, and developed the skills. The technical side is easy to learn, but then how do you it develop? Translate. It doesn't translate onto film. You can feel it. If someone, yeah, but how do you, how do you, how do you develop your taste? 
the end of the day, it's taste, right? Mm -hmm. And how do you develop your taste for great stories? How does your taste um, apply to the rest of the world or to the audience? And now there's a global audience now. There's, yeah. like I said, there's, sh there's shows from every country that are performing everywhere in the world because of the streaming services. Yeah. And how, how, and some, some of these shows are traveling across the globe and having huge fans. It doesn't matter what language it's in. So there's no more bad barriers, there's no more um, uh, uh, excuses for people to not uh, succeed, you know, there's, or, or at least be a working actor, or a working producer, a working director, or working, mm -hmm. there's so much uh, technology out there, and opportunities, and platforms that you can show your work. When I was at film school, there was nowhere to see in my work, nobody can see it. They had to come to the NYU Film Festival, right? It was like there was no opportunity there was nobody buying short films looking at short films there was no distribution there was no youtube right so now there's so much like you said a kid from anywhere in the world can make a great film and get recognized you know Absolutely. i know spielberg i know all the great directors are looking on youtube looking for other talent looking for other are you uh, watching? are you like is that oh, always i'm always watching i mean i watch a short film every day you know from yeah. either someone sends it to me or something that was on YouTube that somebody points out, you know. Yeah. Anyway, Elizabeth, it was so great talking to you. I know. Thank, you, thank for... you so much for joining. It's so nice to see yeah. your face. It's been a little while. So. Thank you. And I'll, I'll let you know when I come to the Middle East. I'll come visit. Please do. I'm sure we'll catch up at some stage anyway. Or Australia. Lots of love right, love you. you. And the family. Okay. okay. All right, darling. Love Bye. you. Bye.